uh, by the time I got there in 1983, everybody was familiar with Nautilus style, but not everybody was training that way. Okay. So, um, to really generalize, the trainers in uh, overall, I thought, the trainers I crossed paths with were better than most of the trainers I crossed paths with today in that they all had come through the Nautilus Fitness Centers. So even if they weren't using it, that was the common vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was compromising, if somebody was doing more sets or not training to failure or using free weights instead of machines, it was still from a common root. And you could always go back to it. You could always have, you know, you can always bring, um, you could always have a discussion because you had the same common root information and then you may have veered from it, but you still had the same common uh, basic knowledge. As opposed to, say, 20 years later when the Nautilus training influence was a lot, um, a lot less, pr lot less um, prominent than it had been in the early 80s. And it was sort of like, an in, tra in gyms, tra it was sort of like everything goes, mm. with no, no root philosophy other than if it makes you sweat or makes you burn or makes you grunt, it's good. So what happened? So I think we, we probably both agree that those Nautilus principles to a degree had a, a really sound backing, physiologically speaking, and can produce results. So what happened from like something that had a solid underpinning that, that you know, at least intellectually can work to a, a, an anything goes fitness uh, environment and, and, and fitness world what ha what happened between those two times you know I think I think people ultimately did not want to work that hard you know I think um, no matter what the client said going in when you actually started to push them hard you could tell they were pulling back and so now you have a choice do I do I live and die by this philosophy no matter what or do I give the person a little bit less than that philosophy to keep them coming as a client? So, um, and, you know, again, getting back to the earlier point, if everyone has the same underlying idea, you can compromise a little bit and not get too far away from the basic idea. But when it's anything goes, and nobody has the same kind of core understanding, then it becomes very chaotic. And then it becomes even trendier than it is now. It just becomes whatever's most fashionable, whatever gets people's attention. Um, <clears throat> so, now, you know, what happened commercially? H hard to say. <clears throat> you know, at, at that time, the Nautilus designs were unique from the Cybex designs, from the Universal designs. And now, if you go look at machines, they're all based around the same design. So, um, it might have just been, you know it might have just been one of those phenomenons Nautilus that was of the moment, right? You had, <coughs> excuse me, you had the fitness boom with Arnold and pumping iron, which gave the whole idea of working out and exposure. And the viewing public may not have wanted to try to be Arnold, but they saw a value in exercise in general, and Nautilus might have been positioned at that time to be the more palatable version of pumping iron, mm -hmm. which is completely amateurish guessing on my part. <laughs>